Hey fellow travelers, welcome to Travel Moji. In today's video, together we will explore the top seven things to do in Rhodes. Before we get into the video, make sure to check out the link in the description for the best way to book a flight at the cheapest price possible. Are you a travel enthusiast? Be sure to subscribe to Travel Moji and hit the bell button to get notifications for our latest videos. Rhodes, often known as the Knights Island, has a long and illustrious history as evidenced by its historical buildings and monuments. Rhodes Old Town, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, is one of Europe's best preserved medieval towns, attracting millions of visitors each year. Strong walls, stone paved streets, magnificent residences, and a medieval castle provide the impression of being transported back to the age of the knights. Rhodes is a perfect amalgamation of a cosmopolitan atmosphere with medieval architecture. Amazing beaches, fashion boutiques, top restaurants, and dance clubs meet the natural landscape, majestic structures, old towns, and attractive villages. It's no surprise that Rhodes, Greece never ceases to amaze visitors from all over the world. Without further ado, let us dive into the top seven things to do in Rhodes. Number seven, visit the majestic beaches. Rhodes Island boasts a plethora of beautiful beaches and sandy coves. The island of Rhodes has numerous beaches with plenty of great hotels, restaurants, bars, and water sports centers. All of Rhodes beaches have crystal clear waters and are stunning in their natural beauty. Sambica, St. Paul's Bay, Laidico, Calathea, and other beaches of Rhodes are some of the best beaches on the island. Number six, Suleimanye Mosque. The Suleimanye Mosque is located at the end of Socrates Street and boasts distinctive architecture. Its walls are painted in a rose pink color. The Suleimanye Mosque is the most spectacular mosque in Rhodes and it symbolizes Ottoman rule. The mosque's minaret was removed in 1987 for safety reasons. It is now a museum that can be visited only on certain days. Number five, ancient city of Camiros. Camiros was one of the island's three major Doric cities, which merged with Lalisos and Lindos to become the great city of Rhodes in the fifth century BC. The remnants of an ancient Mycenaean necropolis in the village of Calavarda suggest that, despite being found by the Dorians, the city's initial residence must have been Achaeans. Number four, the castle of Cretinia. The remnants of a medieval castle can be found 131 meters above the village of Cretinia in Northern Rhodes. The Knights of St. John built this castle, which incorporates Byzantine and Venetian architectural elements. It was initially built on three levels with a separate grandmaster assigned to each level. The Aegean Sea, the nearby island of Haki, and the port of Camiros are all visible from the castle which is a short climb off the asphalt road. The ruins of a chapel can be found inside the walls. Number five. 
Number three, Nisiros Mandraki. The primary port and capital of Nisiros is the beautiful island of Mandraki. Mandraki, being one of the island's largest settlements, provides various amenities to guests, including hotels and a diverse range of stores. All accommodations and amenities are reasonably priced and conveniently accessible in Mandraki, as are the majority of taverns serving delectable meals and vibrant nightlife. The village attracts attention and provides a distinct experience for all visitors. It has a scenic and traditional layout that is highly appealing. Both the foot and the summit of the hill are lined with lovely whitewashed cottages with flat rooftops. Number two, Lindos. Lindos is one of the most magnificent archeological sites in Rhodes. Visitors are compelled to appreciate the stunning natural terrain, which is heightened by the charming quality of the town. White flat-roofed buildings climb up a slope from the golden sandy beach, forming a bright belt around the north side of the castle hill over the tranquil waters of the broad, rocky harbor. Behind the warlike walls, you can see the pillars of a really dainty, tiny temple that was previously devoted to the goddess Athena Lindia. Number one, Tsambika Monastery. Tsambika's monastery is situated on top of a hill with a beautiful view of the sea and surrounding area, providing stunning views of the Tsambika and Columbia beaches. The road to reach Tsambika Monastery turns off the main road just a few meters before the left of Tsambika Beach. The monastery is positioned at 240 meters above sea level with some genuinely stunning views of the coast, making the difficult climb upward well worth the effort. Thank you.